It is a dark and stormy day. Welcome to week number 39 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. Today we are making apple pie bars, which kind of sounds like it's going to be in like a, like a brownie shape. It's not. Basically, it's a rustic apple pie that's going to be sliced into bars. But it sounds good to me, so grab your ingredients and let's bake. Um, if you didn't buy boiled cider for this, you can make your own. Let me tell you, I had a little bit of a fail. I went to make boiled cider yesterday and I went a little too hard and my boiled cider became a disgusting mess that took me forever to clean up. I attempted it again today and I wouldn't say that mine is syrupy. Um, I think I was maybe a little too cautious today, but I'm just gonna roll with it because I'm out of time and I'm out of energy messing around with this. I highly recommend that if you can find a store that has boiled cider, just go buy it. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be an easy process, and for some people it may be, for me it is not. <laughs> All right, we are starting out with the crust. We have two cups of King Arthur pastry flour blend. I'm using all-purpose flour. A half a teaspoon of salt and eight tablespoons of cold butter cut into pats. If you're using your mixer, great. If not, your little, uh, your little pastry cutter here, your pastry blender, you can use a fork too. It's gonna take a while. You want it to resemble like a kind of a crinkly, um, P-shaped uh, crumble is what you're going for. This is going to take me a while to work through, so I'm gonna spare you from watching the rest of this and listening to me ramble on, and we will come back when it's time to add the ice water. It's gonna be about four to six tablespoons of ice water. You're really gonna have to play with it it's pouring rain here today, humidity is a little high. I'm probably not gonna have to add as much water. It's going to be very much a, you're gonna have to watch your consistency and just add a little bit of water at a time. We'll come back when it's time for the water. Okay, I'm ready to add the water and I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. Then I'm gonna give it a good mix. I am using my pastry cutter to start the mixing process, but I have my wooden spoon on standby, so it might take more water than I thought it would need. I'm just gonna dump all mine in. That's, that's the kind of day I'm having. So, I'm gonna work it in, see what's what. Also, you can get your hands in there. Make sure your hands are clean and get them in there and use your hands. It doesn't hurt anything and actually it's sometimes a little bit easier. It's how our great grandmothers used to do it. So, um, if your butter is getting too soft, you may need to stop and put your pastry in the refrigerator for five or 10 minutes, okay? The trick is to not let your butter get melty. All right, crust is done. What we are going to do now is we are going to wrap it in plastic. You're going to make two rectangles out of this. You're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and you're going to put it in the refrigerator for an hour. In that hour, we are going to work on our filling, slicing, peeling, coring apples, all of that fun stuff. So divide your dough in half, get it wrapped nice and tight and get it into the fridge. And I'll see you back in a couple minutes. <laughs> okay, um, Halloween crafts have taken over the kitchen. That's okay. I have got my apples. Um, my sugar, my apple pie spice. I will give you those measurements here in just a second. I put it all in too small of a bowl. So, <laughs> okay, 
Kick your oven on to 425. The filling is six cups of um, peeled, cored, and sliced baking apples. I'm using Granny Smith. Um, apples from our stores lately have not been very good, so I took a chance on the Granny Smiths, and they weren't as great as I had hoped, but definitely the best I've seen in a while. So on top of that, we've got a third a cup of granulated sugar and three fourths of a teaspoon of apple pie spice, apple pie seasoning, if you will. Um, to that, you are going to add some lemon juice and some of your boiled cider. I have not done that yet. I'm just getting my apples good and coated with the sugar. I really should have used the apple core peeler slicer attachment on my KitchenAid, but I was like, eh, it's like five apples, which is exactly what it was. It was five apples. And um, I thought, no, it's not gonna take me that long. It did. Uh, so a little mistake on my part. All right, uh, th oh, three tablespoons of pie filling enhancer, which could be clear gel. Uh, so cornstarch, basically a thickening agent. I'm gonna use cornstarch because that is what I have. I did not buy any clear gel. I may consider doing that in the future, but for now I have not. Where's my cornstarch? There it is. I knew I had one that was open. Um, so I am going to do cornstarch. What is it, three tablespoons. Um, I don't know what the ratio is exactly, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go piece for piece here. So it's supposed to be three tablespoons of King Arthur apple pie filling enhancer. Uh, I'm going with cornstarch instead. Uh, let's see here, one tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay. Put this over here. A pinch of salt. There we go. And two tablespoons of our boiled cider. Bum, bum, bum. My boiled cider again, not so syrupy, but I'm gonna go ahead and add it because it's not quite as liquidy as the apple cider. And it definitely smells strong. So one, two, three, four, yep, that'll do. Then you're gonna mix all of that up. So the lemon juice will help keep your apples from turning brown. A little bit of the citrus in there will always help with that. If you are like me and you're struggling with slicing your apples quick enough, you can drop them in water with a little bit of lemon juice and let them sit while you peel and slice your apples. That will help keep them from turning brown. Okay, this smells good. <laughs> Smells like apple pie. All right, I'm gonna set this aside, clean up my workstation. I'm gonna get out my rolling mat, my flour, my flour duster, and our pie crust. You're also gonna need a baking sheet greased. I'm gonna use parchment paper. So let's get that out, reset, I'll see you back. We are sprinkling our baking mat. I'm gonna go a little overboard on the flour because I know that I have kind of a wet dough. The goal is to get this rolled out to a 17 by seven rectangle. <laughs> that is the goal. So let's see how close I can get to that. Yes, my dough is definitely, definitely gonna take a little bit of work here. That's okay. It's not the first time I've messed up a pastry crust. It will not be the last time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come at this from the side here, I think. And we will need to do this twice because we are topping it. Okay, that's 
getting close to 17 inches, but I am going to need to widen mine a little. You could trim it if you wanted to be super duper exact with yours. I'm taking more of a kind of a rustic approach with mine. So if mine does not end up being a perfect rectangle, then so be it. I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see here, that gives me 16. I'm gonna go ahead and just go a little harder on this end. Try to keep it from sticking. Okay, that's gonna be good for me. I am gonna go ahead and plop this onto my baking pan over here. <laughs> like I said, I'm not really going for perfection. You can, I'm not. There. All right, let's go ahead and roll out the other one. Maybe I'll have a little bit better luck with this one. But if I don't, it's okay. It's gonna taste great no matter what it looks like. I've had some hiccups with this recipe. I really expected it to be a little easier than it has been. Um, boiled cider, who knew? Definitely something I'm gonna consider keeping on hand for fall baking because clearly it's not easy to make. Or maybe it is easy and I just failed. Stranger things have happened and that's okay. All right, trying to get my stretch here. I think this is the edge over here. Um, because my dough is overcomplicated, we'll have to go a little heavy on the flour. All right, now, now getting the width down, 17. This one's actually going a little bit easier. So that's nice, because this is gonna be the cover. So, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna call that done and ready. Um, the second piece is supposed to be 16 by 16, so I, I overdid it. Oh well. Okay, do to do, do. Let me get my egg wash ready. That's something I haven't done yet. It's gonna be one large egg beaten with one uh, tablespoon of water. So get that ready and then we'll come back and get this thing assembled and into the oven. Okay, I have got such a mess going on here. Now, per the directions, we are going to place the smaller rectangle on the pan and brush with our egg wash. Okay, no problem. Um, you should probably make sure you're brushing it all the way to the edges. I'm gonna be dusting mine with some coarse sugar once I get the top crust on. Um, I just feel like it's something I should be doing. The recipe doesn't call for that, but feel free to experiment. I don't know, cinnamon sugar if you're in for that. So dust, 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 brush, brush, brush. Okay, good enough as far as I'm concerned. Now we are going to spread our filling over the pastry leaving three fourths of the edges bare. <laughs> that is not three fourths of the edges. You know what, I'm just gonna heap it in the middle and go from there. I feel like I have way more filling than I'm gonna have space for. 
Um, the picture on King Arthur's website does not show what looks like a very filled uh, pastry. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with all the leftover apples. I'm not sure. No clue. No clue what to do with the leftovers because there are definitely going to be leftovers. I mean, maybe I'll like save them and put them in pancakes tomorrow morning. They'll keep in the fridge. So I guess I could do that. But this is way more filling than I need for my tiny little um, tiny little tart here. That's okay. Maybe I'll do some, some scones or something. I can hit these in the blender. Okay. Let me back off of the edges a little bit. That is a lot. And just a few over here. <laughs> it just slides right off. Okay. Let me set this aside and I'll get the top and we will get this thing assembled. Finish it. Okay, you will need to slice vents in the top. We're treating this like a regular pie. Anytime you have a fruit pie, fruit is got a lot of water in it. It's gonna steam. If you don't want your pie filling leaking out or your crust exploding, vents. So here we go. I probably should have stuck this back in the fridge, but I did not. Okay, let's move that so I don't stab myself. And I should get a fork too, because you are gonna need to crimp the edges. I'm gonna have to pull a little in certain places and yeah, just make it work. Just do your best. It's okay, we can do this. I'm gonna grab a fork. While I listen to the kids scream on the internet at his friends. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Crimping the edges to seal. Crimp them hard. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Make sure, like, I've got some overhang on the top. I'm just folding that underneath. If the top is overhanging, I'm folding it under. If the bottom is overhanging, I'm folding it up and over, and then I'm crimping. We are just securing this as best as we can. That's all we're doing. Like I said, this is very much a, a rustic kind of recipe. I cannot believe I'm getting a phone call right now. Ah. Okay. All right, once you have your edges crimped, you're going to do your egg wash again. You're gonna egg wash over the top of this thing. Um, I egg wash and then I put my vents in. That is personal preference, but it's kind of how I've just always done it because otherwise sometimes that egg just gets caught and dribbles in. And I don't know, that weirds me out. So kind of don't like that. I've been trying to think of all the things I can experiment with with the leftover apples. And uh, I don't have any concrete ideas at this moment in time. But I will work on something. I will figure it out. Okay. I am going to cut the vents before... I, um, before I sprinkle with the sugar. I think I have all of the nooks and crannies washed. Maybe a little bit more right here. Okay. Very simple. You're going to take a knife. You're going to cut a vent just through the top of the crust. You can get pretty with it. You don't have to do something boring. Um, in regular pies, I tend to 
kind of do a little starbursty thing here. I'm not really doing that too much with this. I'm just stabbing it. <laughs> I'm just stabbing it. You do want to make sure that you're going through the crust completely. Which with something like this could be a little um, thicker in some places than in others. And I'm going to go ahead and poke the sides since I think I really overfilled mine. Oh well. Okay. Now. Ooh, for the sugar. Which it does not say to do, but I'm going to do anyways. Just because I feel like it's going to hide anything. <laughs> it's going to take, draw attention away from how this looks. It doesn't look pretty. That's okay. It just has to taste good, right? It doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to taste good. That's where my week is. It doesn't have to look pretty. But okay. I'm going to call this good. What we're going to do is we are going to bake this for 15 minutes at 425. And then when the timer goes off, you're going to reduce heat down to 375 and you're going to bake it for another 12 to 14 minutes or until golden brown. So in we go. 15 minutes on the timer at 425. When the timer goes off, reduce it to 375 and then another 12 to 14 minutes until golden brown, okay? When you pull that out, you're going to allow them to cool briefly on the tray. When it's cool enough for you to handle it, you're gonna transfer it to a rack because you want that bottom crust to harden up, okay? I'll see you back then. It looks rustic. Um, it smells good. And I am excited to try it. Can you pick it up like a bar? I mean, this is an end piece. Eh, not so much in the middle, but I added a lot of filling. So, um, and I also did not, did, I did not pull mine off of the tray early. So let's, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and take a bite. It's good. Not, not as sweet as I usually like for an apple pie. Um, a little more tart than I would uh, have expected, even with the sugar on top. So I'm really glad I added the sugar on top. The apples are well done. Um, my filling did not get as thick as I wanted it to. So that's something to, to keep in mind. And I have a feeling it's because my um, boiled cider was not boiled enough. So a little bit of a comedy of errors. Would I make this and serve this to guests or something? No, no, honestly, with how crumbly it is and the fact that you can't pick it up and eat it easily, I feel like I might as well just have made a pie and served it on plates with forks. Is it tasty though on a rainy fall day? Yes, yes it is. I would like a little bit more cinnamon, a little bit more of a sweet flavor to this, but so I'm gonna call it mostly a winner. Maybe you'll like it a little bit better. I know I have a, a pretty pronounced uh, sweet tooth. That's okay. So it is what it is. It's rustic looking, but nothing I think I would probably make again. Well, that is it for this week's baking challenge. I hope that you had the opportunity to bake along. I hope that your apple pie bars turned out better than mine did. Um, it's been a while since I've had a recipe that I wasn't thrilled with. So, you know, that's okay. It's gonna happen from time to time. If you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button below. I put out one of these videos every single weekend on Saturday mornings. You can also head over to the Facebook page and follow along there because on Wednesday mornings, and I actually did get it on Wednesday this week, I'm gonna put out the ingredient list and the name of that weekend's bake. That way you can decide if you wanna bake along and you have plenty of time to get your shopping done. I am going to go clean up this kitchen that I have 
thoroughly destroyed, and I will see you next weekend.